We're in IBM Storewise, and I'm going to show you how to create a managed disk, followed by a pool, followed by a volume. And then we can go ahead and create our SAS or iSCSI hosts. So we've got our drives installed already. And from here, we're going to go on to our managed disks or MDisk. So let's go ahead and go down to where it says pool and MDisks by pool. And we'll click on new pool. And we'll just call this pool one. Choose create. And this, this procedure doesn't take very long usually. If you want, you can click on the details to see what's happening. And if there's any kinds of errors or anything like that. Let's configure storage now. We are in the pools, internal storage, and we're going to configure storage. So we can either use the recommended or we can select a different configuration. We're going to do a different configuration. We're going to choose RAID 5 instead of 6 or 10. And we're just going to use three of the drives. All right, so we'll choose next. Now we can expand an existing pool. Uh, or create one or more new pools. So we've already created our pool. We're just going to go ahead and use that one. So we'll click Expand an Existing Pool. All right, we highlight that pool. We click Finish. And now it's finishing up, creating our RAID 5. It says 100% complete. We can click Close. All right, very good. And you can see all the different options that are available. And we'll go ahead and choose uh, MDisk, because that's what we just created was an MDisk. So we expand our pool one, and there's our MDisk. And it's, you can see it's a 3.64 terabyte array. All right, continuing on with our store-wise configuration, uh, we have now created the pool. We've created the MDisk. So if we go into our overview page, uh, it's now time to create a volume. So we can create a volume by going to volumes and then volume and go to new volume. We'll click generic. It sees our M disk we created earlier. That's our managed RAID. And we're just going to go ahead and put in three of those terabytes. And we're going to call it our volume one. And we'll click create. And it says it is 100% successful. So now we've created our volume. We can go ahead and assign it to a host. All right, now it's time to go to hosts so we can link our, uh, our volume that we created earlier into our server. So if you go to hosts on the left hand side, click on hosts, then you get this page right here. And we click on new host. And we're going to choose an iSCSI host because that's what we have. But if you have a SAS host, uh, then you would choose that at this time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and give the name of the server as our optional name. And then the iSCSI ports. Now the documentation says to use an IP address here of the server but that turns out to be incorrect you actually want to paste in uh, the iSCSI initiator name so to get that you need to go to server manager and from server manager you can go up to iSCSI initiator and if it prompts you just go ahead and turn it on uh, now the first thing you want to do is copy over the initiator name and hold that in your memory for a second and let's go over to the target now the target should be the IP address of one of the iSCSI ports on the uh, IBM Storewise so I know one of those IP addresses doesn't really matter which one it is just find one that you can connect to and then it shows up with the discovered target so that is correct now when we do that if we go over to discovery it uh, will eventually discover the rest of the IP addresses that are in our list it, it sometimes doesn't do it right away but it will eventually do that alright so then we have uh, favorite targets that shows up automatically 
volumes and devices will be blank until we finish the linking. So we'll go back to configuration and we can see our uh, initiator name, which we copied earlier. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our iSCSI ports and we're, we'll paste in that initiator name. Click Add to List. And we're going to leave this as generic. Go ahead and create host. And once it's done, completed. Now it says degraded, but that's okay uh, because we haven't mapped anything to it. So now what we're going to do is go to Actions and click Modify Mappings. All right, so we see the volume that we created earlier. We're just going to go ahead and add that to the right hand side and click Apply. And now we'll click Close. And it's the only option here is to cancel, but that's okay. You've already applied it, so go ahead and click Cancel. And now we see that our volume is online. All right, so that is how you link your volume to your host. All right, now that our volumes have been mapped into the IBM Storewise, we can see that uh, we have a target. Uh, one says inactive, one says active. That's okay. As long as one says connected, we're good. Click on, click on Discovery. Now we see all of our four IP addresses are showing up. Just, uh, favorite targets uh, still shows up there. And volumes and devices. Now what you want to do is click Auto Configure, and then it automatically adds the volume and mount point. So if you don't see it there, click Auto Configure, and it'll add it at that time. Go ahead and click OK. So now let's go back to our uh, computer management, disk management, and now we see this automatically just pops right up at this time. So now we can go ahead and turn that online. And then once it's online, we can go ahead and configure the partition. All right, next step is to initialize disk. And you can do an MBR or a GPT. Since this is more than two terabytes, I have to do a GPT. All right, and now I'm going to create a simple volume. And I'll just go ahead and maximize that full amount. Make sure it's a quick format, otherwise it takes forever. And now it says it's formatting. The bigger the uh, partition, the longer it'll take. And when it's all done, we'll be able to open our drive. There it is. There's an E drive. All right. We can see now that uh, our E drive is accessible and there's nothing in it at this point. And we can go ahead and add data.